Prophet Ibrahim was born in the kingdom of Babylon a long, long time ago. He was blessed with wisdom even when he was a child, and this made him very, very special. The Prophet was born during a time when the people worshipped the sun, the moon, the stars, and they worshipped even the idols made out of stone. Ibrahim's father was a sculptor, and he used to make the idols with his own hands. His father never used to worship Allah at all. As a child, he used to sit and watch his father carving out these statues from stone. Ibrahim got curious about these funny-looking statues, and sometimes he used to play with them. But when he saw the same statue in temples, he got confused. He wondered why the people were prostrating before these stone idols, so he decided to ask his father about it. One day, when his father was carving a statue of Marduk, the prophet asked his father, Why are people worshipping these toys that you are making yourself? They represent our gods, his father replied. Even though Ibrahim was only seven years old at that time, he couldn't control his laughter. Ibrahim had now turned 16 years old. Ibrahim grew with knowledge and wisdom. He knew that Allah was the only true God. His hatred for the idols increased as he grew older. Whenever he went to the temple along with his father, he was sad to see his people still praying to the idols. One day, Ibrahim left his home in search of Allah, the true God. He walked for a very long time, and finally he reached a mountain nearby. He climbed the mountain and sat near a cave nearby. He sat there for a very long time, and when he looked up, he saw a shining star. When he saw the beauty of the star, he wondered if this star could be Allah. But after a while, the star disappeared. He realized that the star was not Allah, as the true God will never set or disappear. After a while, the moon came up. The moon was very, very beautiful, so Ibrahim wondered if the moon could be Allah. He sat there gazing at the moon for a long time, but after a few hours, when the moon disappeared from the horizon, he realized that the moon was not Allah. Ibrahim was disappointed, but he continued to sit there on the top of the mountain watching the horizon. It was early morning by now, and that was when the sun came up. He looked at the bright sun and wondered again if this could be Allah as it was bigger and very bright. But by evening, when the sun set in the horizon, he realized that it was not Allah, as the true God would never set. It was then that Ibrahim realized that the true God can never be created. He understood that Allah is the creator of everything, even the sun, the moon, and the stars. He then prostrated on the ground offering his thanks. He knew that Allah had just guided him to the truth. It was then that he realized that Allah had chosen him to be a prophet. God had chosen him to guide his people. It was going to be a new life for Prophet Ibrahim. He then traveled back home to tell his father about the great news. But when his father heard what he was saying, he got very, very angry. How dare you reject my gods? He asked angrily. Oh, my father, follow me. I will guide you on the right path. Allah will punish you if you don't repent. The prophet pleaded with his father. I will ask people to stone you if you don't stop speaking like this. His father shouted at him. The prophet was then asked to leave the house by his father. Ibrahim was sad for his father, for he had turned him away. He realized he could do nothing more, so he left home and walked away. He then went to the other people in his kingdom to guide them. He realized that it was his mission to call people back to Allah. Ibrahim went to the market and shouted to them, Allah is the one and only true God. There is no other God but Allah. There is nobody worthy of worship except him. I will not bow down to the idols anymore. The people at the market got really angry when they heard him speak like this. Why do you worship these idols? He asked them. Don't you realize that they have no power? The people threatened him to go away, so Ibrahim had to leave the market. But the prophet thought of a plan to show them that the idols were not real gods. One day there was a big celebration near the riverbank, and the prophet knew that everyone in the city would be present there. The prophet waited till he was sure that there was nobody left in the town. He then took an axe and went inside the temple. There were many idols kept inside the temple, and the prophet started smashing the idols with his axe. One by one, he smashed all the idols, except for one, that was the biggest idol inside the temple. He hung the axe around the neck of this statue and left the temple. The next day, when the people of the town came to the temple to worship, they were shocked to see the idols smashed into pieces. 
The pieces were lying around, all over the place. They gathered together and discussed who could have done this terrible act. There was a young man at the market yesterday, one of them said. He was speaking against our gods. I know this person. His name was Ibrahim, said the other. The people found Prophet Ibrahim and brought him to the temple. Are you the one who has done these to our gods? They asked him. It was the statue here, yes, that big one, the prophet replied. Why don't you ask him? He will tell you if he can speak. This angered the people further. You know very well that these idols do not speak. Then Prophet Ibrahim said, Then why do you worship these idols who cannot speak, nor do they see or hear? Have you lost your minds? The people were ashamed and looked around, and they saw the shattered pieces of idols lying everywhere. Some of them realized that Ibrahim was telling the truth, but the others were still very angry with him. They wanted to take revenge for shattering the idols. Let's burn him in fire, one of them said. Let's build the biggest fire anyone has ever seen and throw him into it. Everyone thought it was a great idea. They gathered all the wood they could find and started building a fire. The people tied the hands and feet of Ibrahim and placed him on a catapult so that he could be thrown into the fire. It was then that an angel from heaven appeared before the prophet and asked him if he wanted any wish to be granted. The prophet could have easily asked the angel to save him from the fire, but he did not. I only wish for Allah to be pleased with me, he said. What followed was a miracle. When the prophet landed in the fire, the fire suddenly got cold. It only burned the ropes that tied the prophet and no harm came to the prophet. The prophet sat there amidst the fire as if he was sitting in a garden. He sat there and sang praises of Allah. The people couldn't see what was happening so they waited for the fire to finish burning. And finally when the fire went out, the prophet walked out of the fire with not a single burn in his body. The people were shocked to see this. This was a miracle. But most of them were still angry with the prophet for destroying the idols. They decided to take the prophet for a trial to the king's palace. The soldiers came and arrested the prophet and took him to the palace of King Nimrod. He was taken to the palace with his hands chained. Nimrod had heard that the prophet had shattered the idols he worshipped. Tell me why you smashed the idols we worship, he asked the prophet. They were false idols, they were not God, replied the prophet. Then who is the true God? Nimrod asked. The prophet politely replied, There is only one true God, Allah. He gives life and death. The king got angry when he heard the prophet. He stood up angrily and said, I can give life and death too. Wait and I'll show you. He asked his soldiers to bring two of his slaves to the courtroom. He asked the slaves to kill the first one. The guard on hearing the order struck the sword and killed one of the slaves. You see, I can give death, said Nimrod proudly. Now kill the other one too, said Nimrod to the guard. But before the guard could strike the slave with his sword, he asked him to stop. He then shouted to the guard, Don't kill him, let him live. He then turned to the prophet and said, I can give life too, you just saw that. The prophet replied, Allah make the sun rise from the east. Can you make the sun rise from the west? Can you do that? Nimrod was speechless. He was really angry with the prophet for confronting him. The two continued to argue. Eventually, the king let Ibrahim go. Ibrahim's fame spread throughout the entire kingdom. Prophet Ibrahim called the people to worship Allah for a long, long time. There was nobody willing to listen in Babylon except for one man and a woman. The woman's name was Sarah, and later she became his wife. And the man's name was his nephew Lut, peace be upon him, who would later become a prophet as well. After years of calling people to Allah, the Prophet realized that nobody else was going to listen to his words. So he decided to migrate to another country. The Prophet then asked his father to join him, but he refused. The Prophet Sarah and Lut then started their long, long journey. They traveled through Syria, Palestine and Egypt, calling out the people to Allah. They helped the poor they could find on the way, and they did many good deeds that made people happy. In the meantime, the Prophet Lut migrated to the Dead Sea and settled down there. And after a few months, the Prophet married Sarah. She was a good believer, and they wanted to have children who would spread the message of Allah after their time. The Prophet and his wife traveled again for many days through the desert. One day they happened to enter the territory of an evil king. The evil king came to know about the beautiful wife of the Prophet, and he wanted to take her. So he sent one of his soldiers to bring the Prophet to him. 
The soldier brought the prophet before the king. Who is the lady accompanying you? asked the evil king. The prophet replied that she was his sister. The evil king then asked the prophet to bring Sarah to his court. He said that he wanted to meet this beautiful woman that everyone in his kingdom was talking about. The prophet went to his wife and said, The king wants to meet you. Do not ever tell him that you are my wife because I've told him that you are my sister, the prophet told his wife. When Sarah went to the king's palace, the king was struck by her beauty, and he tried to take hold of her with his hands. But the moment his hand got near Sarah, it became stiff, and he could not move it. The king was so scared that he requested Sarah, Please pray to Allah for me and I will never harm you. When Sarah prayed to Allah, his hands got cured miraculously. But the moment he realized that his hands were cured, the foolish king tried to take hold of Sarah again, and for the second time his hands got stiff. Please pray to Allah for me, I shall never harm you again, said the king. Sarah prayed to Allah again, and his hands got cured for the second time. This time the king realized that Sarah was no ordinary woman, so he gave Sarah a gift. He gave her one of his Egyptian maidservants, and her name was Hajar. When Sarah returned home, the prophet asked her what happened. Allah taught that evil king a lesson, and he gave me a maid, Hajar, replied Sarah. Years passed, and the prophet grew old. His hair grayed, but he continued to call people back to Allah. Sarah too had grown old, and she realized that she would no longer be able to give birth to a child. So she asked the Prophet to marry their servant, Hajar. She then prayed to Allah to bless them with a child. After a few months, Hajar gave birth to a child, and they named him Ismail. By now the Prophet had grown very old. One day the Prophet woke up, and he felt like Allah wanted him to do something. So he went to Hajar. Get Ismail, he said. Get ready for a long journey. They walked for many days till they reached a dry valley of the desert near the Almarwa mountain. The Prophet then turned around and started walking away. His wife hurried after him. Where are you leaving us? She cried to him. But the Prophet did not answer her and kept walking away. She called him again, but the Prophet remained silent and walked away. Finally, she understood that the Prophet was not acting on his own. She realized that Allah had commanded him to do this. He prayed to Allah to give his wife and son enough food, and he asked Allah to send people with good hearts to them. Hajar drank the water that the Prophet had left, so that she could feed her son. The water finished very soon, and both of them started getting very thirsty. She ran to a hill close by called Al Marwa. She stood there hoping to find somebody, but she did not. Then she ran to the next mountain called Al Safa, hoping to find someone from there. But she couldn't find anyone from there either. She kept running between these mountains seven times. When she climbed Al Marwa for the last time, she was very tired. It was then that she heard a voice. She kept quiet and waited to hear the voice again. When she heard the voice for the second time, she said, Oh, whoever you might be, you have made me hear your voice. Have you got something to help me? That was when she saw an angel digging the earth. The angel kept digging till the water flowed from it. It was a miracle. When she saw the water, she ran toward it and started to build a basin around it. She scooped the water with her hands and drank from it. Then she filled her water bag and ran towards her child. This place where the water rose is called Zamzam. After a few days, some people were traveling through Mecca. They saw the birds flying around Al Marwa, and then they started walking towards Al Marwa. When they arrived, they were surprised to find a woman with a baby sitting near the water. Shall we stay here and use this water, please? They asked her. Hajar said yes, and they drank water from the Zamzam, like that many others came to Al Marwa, and eventually settled down there. The whole place became alive now, and she and her child were not alone anymore. Ismail grew up and learned Arabic from the people who had settled down at Al Marwa. He was a good boy, and his virtues and qualities made the people admire him. He kept thinking about his father and knew that his father would come back someday. Ismail then married a local woman and lived his life in peace. In the meantime, Prophet Ibrahim was very sad because he had not seen his son for a very long time. One day, he decided to go to Mecca to meet his wife and his son. He traveled for many days and finally arrived at Al Marwa. When he arrived, people told him that Hajar had died some time ago. 
The Prophet was very sad to hear this, and then the local people told the Prophet that his son, Ismail, peace be upon him, was still alive. The Prophet was very happy to hear this and thanked Allah. When Ismail finally reunited with his father, he ran to him and hugged him very tightly. He could not believe his eyes. But one day, Allah decided to test Ibrahim. One night when the Prophet was sleeping, he saw a dream. In his dream, the Prophet saw himself killing his son as a sacrifice to Allah. The Prophet woke up and ignored it as it was just a dream. But the next night, he saw the same dream again. This time he realized that this was not just a dream and that Allah was asking him to sacrifice his own son. The Prophet went to his son and told him about the dream. Ismail realized that it was an order from Allah. Do what Allah has asked you to, he told his father. The next day, the Prophet took a rope and a knife and set out for Mount Arafat along with his son. Upon reaching the top of the mountain, Ismail asked his father to tie his hands and legs so that he may not struggle during the sacrifice. The Prophet obliged and tied his hands and legs. Then he blindfolded himself so that he wouldn't have to watch his son suffer. The Prophet raised his knife, but then suddenly he heard the voice from the sky. He took off his blindfold and saw a sheep being sent from heaven. Allah had sent the sheep to be sacrificed instead of Ismail. The Prophet was really happy because his son was going to be alive. The Prophet and his son had just passed a difficult test from Allah. Ibrahim slaughtered the sheep and they had a big celebration. The Prophet and his son kept calling people to worship Allah. They didn't have any place to worship Allah, so one day Allah ordered the Prophet to build a house. Allah has ordered me to build a Kaaba, the Prophet said to his son. And Ismail replied, do what your God has ordered you to do. The Prophet then asked his son if he could help him build the Kaaba, and Ismail agreed. They started building the foundation of the Kaaba. Ismail brought the stones, while Ibrahim built the house. When they completed the foundation and built the corners, Ibrahim asked Ismail to find the stone to fill the corner. While he was gone, an angel got the Prophet a stone. The angel told him that this stone was brought to earth by Adam from paradise. Ismail returned after some time, and when he saw the stone, he was surprised and asked his father where it came from. It was brought by someone who never gets tired, replied Ibrahim, and they finally completed building the Kaaba. They prayed to Allah to accept their work. Allah was very happy with the Prophet and his son for spreading his message, and proclaimed the pilgrimage among men. The Prophet grew old and so did his wife Sarah. One day when he was sitting outside his house, he saw three men coming towards him. The three men were actually angels sent by Allah. The Prophet welcomed them inside to have food, but the strangers did not touch the food at all. The Prophet started to fear. Then the angels comforted the Prophet and asked him not to fear at all. They told him that they were actually the angels sent by Allah. They informed him that they came to his house to deliver good news. They said that Allah was going to give them a son and that he should name him Ishaq. They also told him that his son would be a prophet. Sarah could not believe her ears. How could that be true? She wondered. I am so old. Then the angels said all these things are possible with Allah. After a few months, Sarah got pregnant and gave birth to a child. The prophet named him Ishaq. Peace be upon him, as the angels told him. After a few years, Prophet Ibrahim missed his son Ismail, so he went to see him. But when the Prophet reached the house of Ismail, he was not at home. His wife came out, and when the Prophet asked her about Ismail, she replied, He has gone in search of livelihood. He then asked her how their living conditions were, to which she started complaining about everything. She complained that they were living in misery and hardship and many other things. She was not at all grateful to the blessings of Allah. The Prophet realized that she was not at all a suitable wife for his son, so left her a message that his son would understand. When your husband returns, convey my salutations to him, he said, and also tell him to change the threshold of the gate. The Prophet then went back to his home. When Ismail returned home in the evening, he felt something unusual. Did anyone visit us today? he asked her. She replied, yes, and passed on the message. When Ismail heard the message, he realized that it was his father who visited him that day, and he understood the message that he gave her. It was my father, and he has advised me to divorce you. 
You can go back to your family. His wife went back to her house and Ismail married another woman. After a long time, Prophet Ibrahim again missed his son, so he visited his new house once again. When he arrived, it was his new wife who answered the door. The Prophet asked the same questions he had asked his former wife. But this time when she answered, the Prophet realized that she was a very grateful and kind woman. She kept thanking Allah for the wonderful things going on around, and the Prophet was very happy. When your husband comes home, give him my regards, the Prophet told Ismail's wife. He also added, and also tell him that he should keep the threshold of this gate firm. In the evening when Ismail came back, he asked his wife if anyone had come to visit him. When his wife told him about the Prophet and the message, Ismail was very happy. It was my father, said Ismail, and you are the threshold of the gate. He asked me to keep you with me forever, said the Prophet happily. Years went by, and eventually Prophet Ibrahim passed away, leaving his sons Ismail and Ishaq continuing on the spreading of Islam. Prophet Ibrahim lived for 175 years, and he lived a life full of trials, but he had a strong faith in Allah. He is a man who has great significance in Islam, as he is referred to as the friend of Allah. How amazing it is for him to reach such status with our Lord. The life of Prophet Ibrahim teaches us to love Allah unconditionally, and whatever Allah expects from us, we should trust him as he is the best of planners.